Hello everyone, this is PD. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I wanted to share with you how I earned around 30 million gil in a week and a half or so. Um, it didn't take too much time during the day, the amount of time I spent actually trying to earn the gil, but it was some hard work and you would have to put some work in. This is from an Omni Crafter's perspective, but I will share tips on how to earn gil even if you are not a crafter. Um, so let's get started. You should first off uh, find out what your gil earning goals are. And if you are looking to earn somewhere in the realm of like 5 million gil or less, then I would recommend uh, you don't need to become an Omni Crafter. Just kind of understand what you're looking to do in the game. If you just want a few glamour pieces, uh, you know, maybe enough to afford a small home uh, and don't really care about much beyond that, you don't need to become an Omni Crafter. This is, Omni Crafting is, is if you're looking to have a long-term uh, source of income so like if you're looking to buy a large uh, FC house in my case uh, or you're looking to buy airships uh, that kind of thing um, so we'll go over content clearing goals or content clearing gill earning first because I think rather than leveling up a bunch of crafters and gatherers uh, it may not be in your best interest based on the time required uh, if you only seek uh, basic items uh, basic glamours things like that um, so content clearing Content clearing farming is really popular. It's what most players do that aren't crafters. It's pretty much all you can do to farm wheel. Uh, I'll give you some examples of that. Um, so first off is like using your seals and poetics. Seals and poetics you get from, uh, I suppose, uh, doing duties, everything, you know, any, any duties you do. High-end duties will give you poetics. Basically anything... Uh, Seals you don't get from doing doing duty specifically, but just rolling greed on um, um, any sort of green or pink item that drops in a dungeon, just roll greed on it, and if you get it, you can come over here. Uh, you'll go to expert delivery if you have this unlocked, and uh, just turn in anything. Uh, so I got some stuff down here. Uh, if it's unique and untradeable then you don't have and you don't have use for it you can just turn it into your free company i roll green on any item that's item level uh, 50 50 or higher um and and turn that in for for seals as the item level increases you'll get more and more seals so um, if you're doing like 50 60 70 roulette uh, those items do turn in for a lot of seals um, so just keep that in mind uh, you can also buy these like Shire gear with your poetics and turn them in for seals, but I have a better way, I think, of earning gil with your poet with your poetics, and we'll go over that now. Uh, Amon Sash, we can turn that in. The rest I plan to sell on the market board. Everything that's not unique and untradeable, I plan on selling these on the market board. I can usually earn more money than I can get with the seals. Um, so once you have the seals. You can talk to your storm quartermaster and you want to go to materials i believe yes and you're looking to just buy items here that uh, offer the greatest seal to um gill ratio uh, so whatever that be i know shielite's pretty good uh, the seals cost is pretty high but this sells pretty well um uh, i usually end up buying um hardened sap or potash myself um, now, when everybody in the game knows that these are uh, selling well, then they, the price goes down and it might be some other items uh, that, that becomes the best seal to gill ratio. Uh, you want to make sure when you hit your seals cap or your poetics cap in your, in your currency section that you are spending them. Keep these, keep these numbers low and not maxed out because if you're, you're at your cap and you're earning more of that currency, you're wasting gill. You're throwing away free gill. So just be sure to spend it on something, even if you don't feel like selling that item immediately. Um, okay, so after currency conversion, uh, we have uh, clearing clearing content itself, like on your own. Um, I'm going to give you an example of... Um, let's see, I just noticed today that... Uh, Demimog material is very expensive, and I put it on the market board. So this, these are my two retainers right now selling these two uh, for significantly cheaper than what others are offering for. And I want to show you how easy these are to get. It's just, what I'm selling here is the knowledge of how to get these, 
and the other players don't realize how easy it is to get. I'm also selling my decent skill because you can't uh, you can't get these items without a good decent s skill. Uh, go to Thorn March Extreme. Uh, make sure I'm set to undersized party. Confirm. Join. And this takes about a minute and a half for me to do. And usually nets me around for Demimog Materia. I think about with like 75% success. Uh, it requires high desynth in goldsmithing. Not too high. You could just keep running this and desynthing it uh, to level up your goldsmithing even. I didn't ex exactly do my rotation right. Got to kill all the Moogles here. And this is just one fight. This is, there's, you could do, you know, Ifrit or whatever. Oh, I didn't finish off this guy. Usually when I get in the rhythm, I can do this in a 1 minute and 15 seconds. Um, but you usually get this ribbon here. And if I decent that... Where is it? Weaver decent. Okay. I didn't manage to get Demimog Materia here, but uh, like I said, it's about a 75% chance or something like that. Uh, it depends on how high your decent skill is. Um, and that's how I got that. And uh, in about a minute and 15, I can make like 50,000 kill, right? Um, Demimog Materia isn't always going for this amount, though. And when I share this with my viewers, it's obviously going to crash the market. I've, I've seen this go as low as, uh, uh, you know, like 4,000, 5,000 gil. Uh, and that's just what I've seen. I'm sure it's dropped to even like 2,000. Uh, so it's it's a market, so it'll fluctuate. And if not enough people are running the Moogle Extreme, the Thorn March Extreme, then uh, the price is going to go up. And if too many people start running it again, it's going to go down. So we need alternative sources of income, and you should be doing what is worth money at any given point in time. Um, there are other examples of content clearing, but this is just one, and you can... Um, just kind of find what's selling, find how to get it, and uh, find the fastest way to farm it. There are other items, for example, you could farm. Uh, I know Nidhogg Scale is going for a lot right now because it's used to make the Seeing Hordes uh, weapon. So if you can get a partner together, for example, and farm uh, EX, uh, Extreme Nidhogg uh, for you know however many people you do need to clear that content, you could shoot for getting this item, for example, um, and selling that, yeah, it nets you a lot of gill. So, and lastly, I can offer one more example of content clearing farming, and that is using treasure maps. Uh, um, so I know gazelle skin it, uh, gives a lot of good rewards. Um, uh, this one, the, the Stormblood 8 player maps, uh, if you can get a, a party together and do these maps, uh, they're a little pricey to buy, but they're more than worth it when you get a portal. Um, so those are examples of content clearing farming, and now we'll talk about uh, crafting farming. These are for your long-term uh, crafting needs, and there, there's a lot of content here, so I'm going to break it down into some parts. Um, if you're, first off, I would recommend this to people who have very large, uh, uh, like, gill earning goals. If you're looking to be making tons of gill, as I have, um, and you have use for that, for instance, if you're looking to buy a mansion uh, or, or make an airship for your free company, uh, those sorts of things, uh, then, then this is the route you want to go. So there's a couple concepts I really want to cover because anybody can craft things and sell them and make money. It's pretty clear. Um, what you're looking to do is just, uh, find things on the market board that, uh, have a low crafting cost and, uh, earn you a high profit. So you're looking, definitely looking for a high profit. Um, but uh, another very important attribute of crafting is is looking for things with high throughput. High throughput is really important, I have found, when crafting. Uh, it depends on... And, and what I mean by throughput is is when you put an item on your retainer, 
uh, it is sold quickly. Uh, so basically, people are buying it. Uh, yes, uh, for example, if I go to, uh, you know, uh, like some seeing horrid weapon, uh, I think the handgun I had on the market board for a while. I think I still do. I still have it there. Um, so this, the last purchase was done uh, 1229, which for me right now is almost three weeks ago. I'm not looking to craft items. I, I shouldn't be looking to craft items that take this long for a purchase to happen. Um, it's too hard to update uh, your retainers uh, for three weeks straight for a single item to earn uh, you, you have to decide if it's worth the profit if you have if it takes so long to sell that's a that's a slot in my retainers inventory uh, uh, my, my retainer sell inventory for three weeks uh, before I finally make a sale and that's if I manage to put it at a lower price than uh, the other person on my server uh, so throughput is really important it, it really helps determine like uh, how fast you're earning gill so you should be looking to um, sell items that uh, offer high profit and high throughput. Some examples of items I have found to have high throughput uh, are treated camp for wood lumber. So my retainer's Lorelei here, and I'm selling these uh, at a rate far lower than other players, um, and they are bought very consistently. So I am very much dominating this treaty camp for wood lumber market. Uh, looks like me sales in it too, uh, but offering it at a much higher rate um, than I am. Because when I, I have picked a market that I saw, there's a lot of throughput and there's a lot of profit to be made. Um, this is a difficult item for any random person to craft uh, if I go to treated camp for wood lumber. Um, it requires gobcraft resin, resin which uh, requires poetics to buy in Idleshire. It requires borax, which requires seals to buy. Um, and it requires old growth camphor wood log, which is an unspoiled node. That means none of these items are straightforward to get. You don't just like go gather them and they're up on the market board. Like um, There are three very specific things, and usually um, someone's role in some somewhere in the game someone's farming one of these but not all three of these um so this is a very complex item to get uh, and that's where you can kind of find uh very profitable items uh, to make uh, the harder an item is to get obviously the less there will be of it um and and the more profit you stand to make off of it if you can find the best way to create that item so gobcraft resin, uh, gobcraft resin. Uh, I've just turned a bunch of poetics into this, uh, and uh, borax. I server hunted to find the cheapest um, uh, borax on uh, in my data center and bought a crap ton of it. Um, and old growth camphor with long. I just put it um, on my uh, Final Fantasy fourteen clock uh, a timer, and then every time the node was up. I farm that, and I have crafted well over 200 of these, and whenever um, these sell, I just come over here, right-click, put up for sale. This is my 208 tree camper wood lumber right now, um, and I've been making a ton of money off of that. Um, I'm starting to do the same thing with astral birch lumber because it's a very similar concept. But this is just lumber. I'm doing lumber. You do you. Like there's there's so many items in the game. I'm just doing these are heaven's word items and ARR items. You could do the same thing with uh, stormblood items. Um, just do what whatever's working for you. Uh, if if I start um, noticing that. Uh, I've been in this market. Uh, treated camphor wood lumber is is becoming way too low. Uh, it's not selling for anything anymore. Um, then I would just move on to a different item, uh, and that could easily happen when I share information like this. Uh, as soon as you share information about the market, what I'm selling, it's it's oversupplied now, and it's not worth as much anymore. Um, so just uh, you're gonna have to do some work to find what's what's selling and what's giving you the most profit. Uh, but when you do, the guild rewards will come. What I recommend doing is just start randomly crafting things that seem profitable. Uh, and if you do run into something that uh, you've made a lot of profit of, start to mass produce it and try to make your living off of it, essentially. It's it's very reminiscent of real life where you uh, 
find the most optimal way to make something and you're able to offer it at uh, a reasonable price to consumers everywhere and uh, if you have the most optimal way of crafting something um, and supplying that the, uh, that material or end, end product then uh, you stand to gain a lot of money against all the consumers in your world. A couple categories of items that I've found to have high profitability and high throughput um, is materia and uh, certain furniture. Um, so if I can share with you now, um, let's just go to, I think, yeah, let's just go to materia 8. It's usually Savage Aim is worth the most, but... Heaven's Eye, I believe, is worth the most right now. Um, so Heaven's Eye Materia is is worth the most right now. Uh, if we go to history, look how many purchases are being made on, on Materia. This is, um, it's only noon where I am right now. And within this day, uh, there have been plenty of purchases on this Materia. So Materia is very high throughput. People always need Materia. Uh, so if you're looking to make this uh, part of your income, as I have and many, many people do, you're looking to find the most optimal way to get materia. Uh, and what I have found is I am able to uh, trade in my Stella clusters for materia. And I'm basically able to make my crack Stella clusters um, a source of income. And so what's the fastest way I've found to get st Stella clusters? Well, this is the research you need to do as a person uh, looking to earn gill. Uh, for Stella Clusters, for example, I found Hunt Trains to be a very good source of Stella Clusters. Um, rather than doing uh, an entirely or an entire leveling roulette, um, I to get a Stella Cluster, I can usually just kill two Hunt Marks or so and average one Stella Cluster. Um, and killing two Hunt Marks takes maybe like three minutes, four minutes, probably maybe 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 four minutes, whatever. It's it's pretty low. It's pretty insignificant. Depends how many people are out for the hunt that day. Um, that's materia. Uh, I, for example, have made a lot of money on um, uh, shower stands. So most people that furnish their house are looking to have something to bathe in. They want it to be uh, immersive. So uh, essentials in home furnishing are a pretty good source of income. So this is my retainer Ariel offering the uh, least expensive shower stand in my server. So another thing I can recommend is to be in multiple market. Um, so be in multiple markets. So the Treaty Camper Wood Lumber I am is is like one of like ten markets I'm in. I have many things crafted in bulk, um, and I'm prepared to sell them uh, little by little um, uh, whenever whenever they need to be replaced on the market board. So uh, sometimes. Um, the lumber I'm selling is not worth a lot. Uh, Astral Birch Lumber just a few days ago was selling for uh, around like 8000 I think. And, and now it's selling for 16000 The market fluctuates and you want to use that to your advantage. When things get too low, um, I stop selling them. And uh, I'll start selling them when they start um, to be worth uh, as much as I think they're worth. Um, so... Just for an example, I'll go into my retainer right now and uh, kind of give you a run through of uh, um, how I adjust prices on the market board. So I'm going to adjust the price and I'm looking to make it the lowest offering on the market board. Uh, and if I think the lowest um, offering is too low, uh, I will pull my item from the market board. So this is only lowering it by 100. Very inconsequential. I'll make mine the lowest offering. This is lowering it by 5,000. Still pretty inconsequential. Uh, uh, this was made with a Nidhogg scale, which is going for 725k right now. Um, so I still stand to gain uh, some decent profit off of it. Um, if this dropped before, like, below like 850k 860k i'd probably pull it off the market board and spend my retainer slot selling something i could actually make money off of um this is selling for 19k or 20k um i'm actually going to pull this off the market board uh i don't want to sell that for 19k i don't think that's a good deal for me so 
this is still pretty good profit at 57k so let's let's sell for that um if i don't i think i've been undercut 54 and you just want to go through and, and do this for every item you have i think this is being sold for too low right now yeah 25k i'm just going to pull these off Um, looks like I can lead this as is. I actually like this hasn't sold um at twelve hundred, so I'll just go down to nine nine nine. This has been selling really well. Um, I sold it for ten ninety seven earlier today. I just put another one up. Let's undercut this other guy. And this is like uh, me just trying to fill in slots. I don't stand to gain a lot of money off this, but I want to keep my retainer selling a full inventory of items. That's pretty important. As you can see, I'm just selling all sorts of things. All sorts of things. I have, I have a ton of things, a ton of markets I'm in. Um, I just gave you one example. Um, So here, I'm going to take a look at the prices. I do have the lowest price, but I know this has been on the market board for a bit. Um, and I'll look and I'll see things have been bought today, but it looks like someone bought something for 5000 each because it was in a stack of three. So that's really important to the customers here. So what I'll do, um, so I'll return this to my inventory. I'll put it up for sale again, but in two stacks of two. Or two stacks of five, sorry. I did that a stack of three. It's just important you keep in mind how things are selling uh, and what your customers want, I suppose. All right. This is a little tedious, but the more you do this, the more likely your items are to sell and the more throughput you get. Uh, so if you're really dead set on earning gill, you want to be checking your retainers uh, as frequently as possible. So I have one offering for a thousand here. How much does this go for? This goes for well over a thousand, um, but it's only bought in sets of one to three or so. Uh, looks like big bulk stacks may go for less, so I'm just gonna offer mine. I should probably pull this from the market board and sell it later. So I'll return that to my retainer. All right. So I have three more things I can sell uh, on this character. Um, I really just, I'll, I'll sell anything. I'll go into his inventory. Um, when I find something in his inventory is not worth anything at all, 50 gil, just sell it to the merchants. Uh, let's see if Astral Oil is worth anything right now. Yeah, Astral Oil is worth a decent amount. So we'll sell five of these, uh, six. I think even numbers are better. All right. So that, I've done one retainer. You would do that to all your retainers, however many you have. So obviously the more retainers you buy, I have two extra ones, uh, the more money you can make in this game. Uh, your, limited, your sell output is limited by the number of retainers you have. The number of retainers you have, uh, assuming you're free to purchase as many as you choose, uh, the number of retainers you have I recommend should reflect how much you play the game uh, if you're looking to optimize your gill earnings. Um, if you play a lot, you'll easily max out uh, 20 items per retainer at a time. Uh, you'll be able to keep their stock full of items you can sell. Um, I think I was undercut on an item here, so let me fix that. I forget what item it was. The armchair? I think it was the armchair. Yep.
Uh, and that's keeping your retainers up to date. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is gathering and how to use gathering to make money. Um, it makes sense to just look on the market board and just like pick the item that is making that that costs the most. Um, so, uh, you know, like mithril is pretty expensive. I'm selling mithril um, or mithrite. Sorry. Um, Usually this is some um, unspoiled nodes. Like unspoiled nodes are worth a lot. Um, so if we could take a look at like adamantite ore, adamantite ore is being sold for two thousand. And if this is selling for two thousand per tick, we should never be going to farm dark steel ore. It doesn't make sense to spend our time farming dark steel ore when we could um, spend our time farming farming adamantite. Uh, time is our resource. It's an opportunity cost if we're spending it doing things that aren't gill optimal um, so it's important that we spend our time farming the most profitable item and only the most profitable item uh, on the market board um so uh this this if you could go through all these but really you want to look for something in the 2000 to 3000 gill range um, so Lumithrite's pretty good, uh, Adamantite was a pretty good option, um, and, and, uh, just look for those items, and, uh, you want to farm them as a late level 80 gatherer. So if you're not a level 80 gatherer yet, I wouldn't recommend gathering to farm gill, unless it's to just sustain yourself for basic needs. First and foremost, I want to recommend that you should spend your... Uh, GP when it is available. So um, if I switch to my gather right now, I'm at 800 GP. Um, it does not, I do not recommend farming with gathering um, like for long periods of time. You should farm one node and be done with it. Uh, so, so I talked about um, I talked about treated camphor wood lumber, and this is the material used to create it. This is selling for a lot. It's selling for three thousand per um, per item, and I have I have optimized my farming of this item, and I know when it spawns, and I have a timer on it, and I have even put a favored destination in Zenith um, to farm this item, and it happens to be uh, up right now. So I'm going to switch to botany here, and keep in mind, uh, old growth camphor wood uh, logs are being sold for three thousand a piece right now, or that's the going rate on the market board at least. So I I highly recommend farming only when you're a level eighty crafter, and ideally you have facet gear, um, but the level eighty I level four thirty gear is okay too. Uh, you stand to gain more if your perception is higher because pick clean becomes. Uh, it, it earns you more materials per swing. Um, so here we are. Uh, I have gathering attempts plus two, a very common modifier. Um, and I'm going to earn five old growth camphor wood logs per swing. That's 15,000 gil, 15,000 gil, 15,000 gil per swing. And I'm getting eight swings. 15,000 times 8, that's 120,000, right? Yeah, 120,000 gil for one node. Um, so if I were to sell these, if, if I were to turn around and sell these on the market board, I would earn 120,000 gil. And how much time did that take? Maybe two minutes, and it's guaranteed. In my case, though, rather than directly selling them on the market board, I might just turn them into more treated camphor wood lumber because I've optimized my acquisition of the other materials. So I craft this, and notice I'm not, you know, gathering any anything else. I used up my GP, and I'm not going to bother gathering anymore. I, I stand to gain so much more uh, items, more gill per hour, if you will, if I just wait until my GP is... Uh, recovered. It's important that when you're earning gill, you understand what opportunity cost is. 
and how it applies to you. It applies to players differently depending on how much time you have to play. If you don't have a lot of time to play, then I do not recommend spending any of your time farming items that are not the most gill optimal items to farm. If you are looking to buy Lumithrite ore, you say, oh, this is too expensive, it costs 2,000 per ore, that's insane. You should buy Lumithrite ore if you don't have a lot of time to play. Why does that make sense? Is because there are other items out there that if you spent your time farming instead of the Lumithrite ore, you would earn more money. And for example, that would be the old growth camphorwood log I farmed. If old growth camphorwood log is selling for 3,000 per, uh, per item, as it did yesterday, then you stand to gain more money by simply farming old growth camphorwood log and buying the Lumithrite ore. Now, this may not always be the case. Uh, tomorrow, Lumithrite ore could be worth more than the camphorwood log. Um, so uh, it just makes sense for whatever state of the game you're in to be buying what's uh, cheaper um, and spending your time doing what's worth more. Now, if you are a player who has time, uh, to farm both because of limited cell output you should get both so in the real world uh, people specialize it's important to apply real marketing strategies to final fantasy and understand the differences so looking at the real world people specialize people take up a business of i am the camphor wood log player i harvest camphor wood log like in the real world that would be a lumberjack they're a lumberjack, they're good at cutting down trees, they know how to do it, they're good at turning it into uh, logs and giving it to the people who need it. That's their business. They have optimized it, and they can sell to as many people as they want. In Final Fantasy XIV, you can't sell to as many people as you want, so if you want to make more money, you have to limit what you buy. So, if a carpenter buys logs and sells lumber what they're offering is the ability to turn logs into lumber if the carpenter looks to make more money they just sell to more people in the real world in final fantasy you can't just sell to more people so the only way to increase your profits is to get the logs yourself uh, that's why being able to do everything omni crafting uh, is an advantage if you play a lot omni crafting allows you to cut expenses. You don't have any expenses. You can do everything yourself. Um, if you don't have a lot of time to play the game, then uh, being specializing is fine. You could be that camphor with log uh, lumberjack for the world and just do only that. Um, but I hope I clarified how it's a little different in Final Fantasy because of cell capacity. Because of how markets fluctuate, though, I still recommend being in more than one market. So don't just be a logger, you know, find other items that are worth uh, good amounts of money and be in those businesses, too. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. Like I said, I've only been uh, playing this game for around four months or so. Um, so if you have anything to share uh, as far as earning gill, uh, any other comments or input, I'd be glad to hear it. But if this video helped you, just uh, go ahead and hit the like button, and thanks for watching. See you guys.